Let us now understand the types of inventory. Let us look at this production process at home. This is a process of roti making, roti being an Indian bread. There is flour in this container which is mixed with some water, salt and oil and kneaded to make a dough. These are then separated into small balls which are then flattened by a rolling pin. Finally, the bread is made and we get rotis. So we have flour here which is the raw material for making rotis. Along with flour, we have some other supplies. We need some other supplies like we said salt, maybe oil and water. All this is used to make a dough. From the dough, we get the rotis which may be called the final product or the finished good. The items in between the dough, the flattened bread, etc. is neither raw material nor finished goods. They are partly finished goods and they are often referred to as work in progress. WIP. This is called work in progress since this is work in the process of material being converted to finished goods. This is the description of a simple production process at home where you have kinds of inventories of raw material, work in process and finished goods. Let us now understand the kinds of inventories we have in business. Broadly, we shall consider the business of a trader and the business of a manufacturer. Let us first consider the business of a trader. A trader buys goods and sells them without any further processing on the goods. When he buys goods, he buys them in bulk and needs to store them in some place. He may store them in his shop or a warehouse or a go-down. These goods are then sold as and when there is a demand. So a trader has goods here which are in total saleable condition and these are finished goods. This is the only kind of inventory that a trader might have in the form of finished goods. Let us look at a manufacturer. A manufacturer needs materials with which he will make a commodity, a final product, which is then sold in the market. If we take an example of a tire manufacturer, the manufacturer may require raw materials of rubber, steel plates, etc. These are all bought in bulk and kept in an area, in a stores area of the factory. We could call this the stores area. As and when production requires the materials to be issued, these materials are transferred to the production area or the shop floor area of the factory.
work goes on in the factory, in the shop floor area of the factory. And at any, and this particular process may take a few minutes, may take a few hours, may take a few days or may take a few weeks. Therefore, on the shop floor, at any point in time, there would be semi-finished, partly finished goods, which are nothing but, as we mentioned before, work in progress. When goods are completed, when the production process for a batch is over, those goods are transferred to the warehouse where finished goods are kept. These may be We have raw materials, work in progress and finished goods. However, besides these, in order to run the machinery, there would be several spares which are required. There would be nuts, bolts and such other items also which are required for the regular functioning of a factory of the machinery in the factory. These two would be stored here. We could call these maintenance supplies. Thus, the kinds of inventories that we have, the types of inventories that we have are raw materials, materials which are required for the process of production, work in progress, which is partly finished goods in the process of production and we have finished goods both here and here which are in saleable condition. Let us understand how accounting standard 2 has defined inventories. It says, AS2 says, that inventories are current assets, current assets being assets which are expected to be converted to cash within a year. So inventories are current assets which are held, mind you, the possession, the title of possession of the inventories should be with the business. If there are any stock of goods which have actually been sold but are still lying in the premises of the business, these inventories do not actually belong to the business. For example, if business A has sold goods to business B, but business B has not yet taken delivery of these goods, the goods would physically be lying in the godown of business A, but the title of possession, the goods actually belong to business B. Therefore, inventories are current assets held. Therefore, when we are asked what is the inventory of business A, though physically this stock is present in the godown of business A, this will not form a part of the inventory of business A. This will actually be a part of the inventory of business B, though physically this stock do not appear on the premises of business B. Therefore, inventories are current assets which are held for sale in the ordinary course of business. The reference here is to finished goods, which again may be in case of a trader or in the case of a manufacturer. 
Inventories are current assets held for sale in the ordinary course of business. In the process of production for such sale. This reference is to WIP. For sale in the ordinary course of business, in the process of production for such sale, in the form of materials and supplies to be consumed in the process of production or rendering of services. This is nothing but raw materials and other supplies. like gum, oil, etc., which might be required in the manufacture of the tires from rubber and steel plates. And also, in addition, we have maintenance supplies and consumables other than machinery spares. Maintenance supplies, like we mentioned before, would refer to maybe some tools, nuts, bowls, etc. However, there may be certain spares which can be used only by a specific machine. They cannot be used on other machines, nor are they expected to be used at regular intervals. Such kind of specific machinery spares are not considered a part of inventory. They are considered a part of the machinery itself, and therefore they are a non-current asset or a fixed asset. Thus, to summarize, what are inventories? Inventories are current assets held for sale in the ordinary course of business. That is, they are finished goods or they are in the process of production for such sale, work in progress, or they are in the form of materials and supplies to be consumed in the process of production, that is, raw materials, or they are maintenance supplies like tools and nuts. Of course, specific machinery space would be excluded from the scope of inventories. They are a part of fixed assets. Let us consider a small exercise. <clears throat> At the time of stock taking conducted on 31st March, there were certain goods costing rupees 1000 that were lying in stock in the godown. These goods were invoiced for sale for rupees 1200 on March 15th. What should be included for calculating inventory for the year ended on 31st March? Exclude the goods from calculating inventory. Include the goods in inventory at a sales price of 1200 or include the goods in inventory at a cost price of 1000 or none of the above. Let us quickly go through this once more. At the time of stock taking conducted on 31st March, there were certain goods which cost rupees 1000. They were lying in stock in the cooldown, but these goods have already been sold. These goods were invoiced for sale on March 15th for 1200. Therefore, basically, it means that this inventory or these goods are not. A part of the inventory of this business. So what should be included for calculating the inventory for the year ended? Exclude the goods from calculating inventory seems to be the correct option. Because we would not include, taking all other options, we would not include the goods in inventory at a sales price of 1200. Inventory would not be valued at the selling price. We would not include the goods in inventory at a cost price because these goods have already been sold. The title, the possession of these goods, the title of these goods does not belong, though physically they are present on the premises. Thus, at the time of stock taking, these goods should be excluded from calculating inventory.